Hi everyone, I'm Dana and welcome back to Inverter Always. In today's video, we're going to be wrapping up the Daikin ITM Central Controller Series. I'm going to be showing you guys a program called the AirNet Engineering Tool. This is a tool that we typically use so that we can set up trend logs and DNet monitoring, some stuff on the back end of the ITM, but some very, very helpful and important stuff on the back end that allows you to go back later, export data, see what was happening before an issue occurred. It is definitely worth the extra time since you're already in front of the ITM. Go ahead and get this programmed too. Guys, a lot of information to get into in today's video. So we're going to go ahead and jump right in. But if you do enjoy today's video, please click the like button below. It really helps out my channel. And if you guys haven't already, please consider subscribing. All right, let's jump right in. All right, you guys. So before we jump into today's content, I want to give you a few disclaimer points because it is going to be important when it comes time to actually program this engineering tool. So the first thing is before you can program the AirNet engineering tool information into the ITM, the ITM has to be 100% completely programmed. That means all of your units need to be installed, they need to be operational, and the ITM needs to see everything. The second thing that's really important is you need to make sure that the outdoor unit and all the indoor units have all the AirNet addresses set. Earlier on in this series, I explained that in order for the ITM to work, for you to be able to program it, you only need to program in the group addresses. But I also specifically noted that I always add the AirNet addresses to the indoor units and to the outdoor unit at the time of commissioning because later on, now, you're going to need those. So you hopefully did those when I told you to do those in earlier episodes of this series. If you haven't already AirNet addressed all the equipment on the job, go and do that now before you start programming the AirNet engineering tool for the ITM. One other thing to keep in mind is in today's video, we're going to be going through some PDF files of the step-by-step -step instructions. This is just an example. We are not actually hooked up to an ITM. In order to actually program this, you have to hook up to the ITM with a laptop or computer via the Ethernet cable on the job site to be able to actually see all of the equipment that's installed and then adjust all of the program settings for each of the units individually. Because we're not actually programming a job on a job site, we're going to be looking at all the steps on how to do this via PDF documentation. It is important to note that this is not a training. This is not a factory authorized class by any means. I'm simply grabbing the resources that I have and resources that I have referenced in the past to walk you through the steps on what you need to do in order to get this to work for either your data export and data analysis out of the ITM, that five days of data, that trend log that you can export, or if you have DNet monitoring that you are subscribed to for Daikin to monitor all of your equipment, you need this tool for both of those to function. All right, let's go ahead. Let's go to the desktop so we can start working through some of these steps. As you guys know by now, in order to get the software, you are going to need to reach out to your local vendor, whether that be your rep or your distributor. And if they can't get it for you, you'll have to get it directly from Daikin. You do need to have prior training to be able to have access to this software. It's not something that they're just going to hand out willy nilly, as is all the software we've pretty much talked about on this series. So basically what you're going to do when you log into this tool, there is a user code. There's also a password when you open up the software, which comes with the software. So I'm not going to give that information to you in today's video. But once you get hooked up to it, this main screen is what's going to show up. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to start the commissioning process. Now, what's really cool about this program is it's going to walk you through step by step through a commissioning wizard, how to program this. So it isn't super, super easy, but it isn't super, super complicated either. Click start commissioning. It asks, do you want to start commissioning? You say, yes, I do. So then what you're going to notice is over on the right hand side, you're going to have this little commissioning wizard button populate. Click that because that's what's going to start the commissioning wizard that takes you through step by step by step what to do. So it says, hey, 
you're about to do the commissioning wizard, blah, 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 blah. Just click the next button. It's going to take you to the next step. The next step is where you're going to have to have the system verify the port of the ITM. What it's going to basically do is it's going to scan port one. So if you had your ITM uh, with all the wires hooked up to the back of it, then port one is going to be the back of the ITM. If you had an expansion module, that's port two, three, four, however many you had. So click the port that you want to check, and then you're going to hit address check. Now, sometimes it will air out depending on the version of VRV that you have. Sometimes you will have to click without D3 net reset and then click address check. But for the most part, what you're going to do is you're going to click on with D3 net reset, click address check, and then we're going to go to the next step. It should go ahead and start this window, which is checking for the equipment. Now, this will take some time. You need to be patient. It's going to start the check and then it's going to start collecting all of the data. So in this particular case, we had 11 outdoor units with 38 indoor units on the system. Wait for it to complete before you click any buttons on the right hand side. If you want to see more information about what the unit has seen, you can click the show details window and it's basically going to show you all of the data that it has seen so far. Go ahead and click close to go back to the previous screen. So once the check is complete, you can go ahead and exit the check and then close out of this window. Once you close out of this window, if you have any other ports to check, do that now. Repeat the process. And once you're all done, we're going to click next to go to the next step of the wizard. It's next going to ask you if you want to load any pre-configured data. We're going to say no because we're going to edit all the data live. You're going to then click next. It'll ask you to confirm. Go ahead and confirm. Then it's going to take us to the port setup. And this is really where you're going to manipulate and adjust all of the text to make sure everything matches what you've programmed into the ITM verbatim. So go ahead and click on port setup. It's going to take you to a window that looks like this. And basically what this is, is, this is a master chart of all the equipment that you have. Personally, I don't bother trying to filter through this. All I do is I scroll up and down to make all of my edits. When you guys are ready to edit the data, you're basically going to start with the top line item. You're going to double click it and you're going to start filling out all the information. As far as the line name goes, then the installation date, your piping lengths, you're going to have to go down and choose the model name. So the actual model number of the unit, the serial number, there's a lot of information here that you're going to need to plug in. When you have an indoor unit, you're going to do the same thing. The model number of the indoor unit, the serial number and the installation location, obviously just whatever room number that you're going to put it in. You're going to notice if you scroll the bar over to the right, that there's going to be a bunch of information missing. One of the more important things that I've noticed is the model name does not always match the model number that I have actually installed on the job site. So as you're going through this list and you're filling out some of these items that are missing information, it's going to be important to also fill in and verify the information that has already been pre-filled in from earlier steps where we went out and grabbed all of the port information. You're going to notice that one of the strategies that takes place is plugging in airnet and group addresses for some of these locations. And this is totally doable. This is preference when you're plugging in all of the information. Once you're complete and everything is filled in and everything is green, then you're going to say, OK, you want to make sure that there isn't anything that's still pink because pink means not good. You want everything to be good. You want everything to be programmed. Go ahead and click OK to go to the next step. Click Next. Then we're going to fill out some information. This is information that should be provided by Daikin. The LC number is when you are going to be using the DNet monitoring services along with the user ID. If you are not using the DNet monitoring services, then leave the LC number as the default, whatever it was already displayed as. Plug whatever, in, whatever you want in as the user ID and wherever this ITM is going to be located, plus your installation date and your utility frequency, and then click Next. 
Connection method is always going to be LAN, at least in my market. We don't use modems or dial up or anything like that anymore. Click LAN and then click next. Then for your access point location, don't change anything on this page except for the access point name. Now, basically from what Daikin has said, you can pick any of these locations that you want. I will typically just pick the Japan one because that's where Daikin's headquarters are. I don't know if I do that just because of a weird bias or, or what, but there's no option for US because they're not doing it in the US yet. I should say they're not monitoring the data in the US yet as a central hub. I don't know, hard to explain. Long story, just pick whichever one of these that you want and click next. The next step is gonna ask if you wanna use a proxy. If you need to use a proxy, plug in the information here. If you're not, click next. Finally, it's gonna ask if you want to synchronize with the NSC clock. Do not click this because this is then going to try and synchronize your ITM with the Japan clock or with the China clock or with the Belgium clock, basically whichever hub you picked a few steps previously. So do not check this box. Go ahead and just click next. And now we're prepping to be done. Basically at this point, you are done. Click finish. It's then gonna ask if you want to transmit data to the hub. Now, if you are doing DNet services, then yes, check this box. If you only went through this process so that you could be exporting five days worth of data later on off the ITM, then don't check this box. Then click finish. Once you're finished, it's gonna say that your data setup is complete. Awesome, we can go ahead and hit close. If you needed to transmit anything, another window would pop up. And at this point, you'd be able to test your connection to the Daikin hub by clicking the transmit button. It'll go through all the steps. And as long as everything is good, it'll tell you communication is complete. You can then close. If you're not doing this step, then don't worry about it because you're not gonna use DNet monitoring services. And now we're getting very, very close to being done. This is just an example to show you if there was an error that occurred, what happened, and here's why you, it could not connect to the hub. Once you guys are done, it's gonna take you back to this main screen. I want you to ignore the whole maintenance screenshots here. And basically, you're done. At this point, we're just gonna click on exit. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a snippet of what it looks like when you click exit, but it basically is going to give you a little notification that says, do you want to go ahead and start the monitoring process. You just click OK, OK, and it closes out and, and you're fine at that point. So going through all of these steps, if you have a, a small job, it's not going to take long. If you don't have DNet, you don't have to plug in all the line links and the added charge and all the extra details like the serial number information, that takes a little bit longer. DNet definitely takes a little bit longer to set up. But if you're just trying to program all of this stuff so that you can use the export feature on the ITM, then generally it doesn't take too long because you don't have to make a whole lot of changes. I hope this information has been helpful for you guys. Exporting information out of the ITM is very, very helpful when you get error codes because if you don't have this ability, you have to plug in your service checker to the equipment. You got to figure out where the problem was located. You got to try to uh, manipulate the system to make that problem happen again. And sometimes you don't know what caused the problem in the first place. So having the data that you can then sift through, look at what happened an hour, 30 minutes, 10 minutes, right before the error code populated, that's gonna get going in the right direction. So that way, when you do hook up service checker, you're at least going down the right path with a little bit of information. So hopefully it's not taking as much time on the job from a service perspective. Again, a lot of information to get through. I realize the ITM, we barely scratched the surface. There's so much this ITM controller can do. The whole point of this series was just to give you guys some of the basics, get you guys at least a little bit more comfortable with using it, programming some of the basic stuff that you do on a regular basis with just a couple of the advanced features. If you guys enjoyed this series, please click the like button below. It really helps out my channel. And if you haven't already and you've enjoyed this series and you've enjoyed the content, please consider subscribing. You guys, thank you so much for watching Inverter Always. I hope you all have an awesome day.